All right, so I wanted to make a really simple tutorial to show how I was able to track the Vive controller in Blender in real time. This is a super simple puppet rig that I built, and I can think of a lot of other use cases for something like this, but I don't see any tutorials on how to do it, so here we go. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open Steam VR, make sure that it's tracking and everything. I've only got one controller attached because that's the only one that I'm gonna to use to puppet. But then the next step is to open Touch Designer. So Touch Designer opens up with this sample file. And I'm just going to right click, drag, select all of these and delete them. We're going to be using channel operators, which are called chops. And we're going to take the open VR. And then basically we just want the OSC out. That's the one that's going to go to Blender. But as you can see right now, uh, the values in here, they're not changing when I move the controller. And that's because this output is set to sensor and not controllers. So I'm going to go ahead and click controllers. And then I have the right and the left controller. But since I'm only using one controller, I'm going to go ahead and disable the left controller and then this only has all of the buttons from the right controller. Some of these don't even do anything. There's the joystick XY click and then also the B button. So take with that what you will. Also, it outputs Euler rotation and we need quaternion rotation. It's pretty hard to adjust that in Blender. So what I'm going to do is separate out with a select, I'm going to call these nodes because I'm used to Blender, uh, with this select chop node thing. And then I'm also going to add a transform node. And then from this select, I want to select bracket TR for transformation and rotation, and then also bracket XYZ. That's going to give us just the uh, transformation and rotation. It selects out those things from this list. And then under transform, you want to go to output and change the Euler rotation to quaternion. And I also turn on continuous rotation and no order channels. It's not a really big deal because I'm going to go ahead and copy this select. But instead of selecting TR XYZ, I need TQ for quaternion and XYZ W. Because quaternion rotation has four values, not just three. Another step that I like to add, which all of this is, well, at, at this point, all of this is up to you if you want to rename this kind of stuff. I just like to have a much more simple address. I like to rename it so that it only says RTX, RTY, RTZ, and so on. So I'm going to go in and say star controller, star and then star star. And then out just says those simple addresses. And we can go ahead and plug that directly into OSC out. And for the OSC out, I'm gonna go ahead and disable cook every frame and disable send events every cook. And the 10,000 is what you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to. If you wanted to, you can also select out the other things that come from the controller. Like for instance, on my puppet, I use the trackpad. So you'll want to just add another select. I'll go ahead and do that just so you can see what it looks like. And then under channel names, I would do star DX, star DY, and star It gives you the touchpad, X, Y, and the click. 
but you could also be creative with um, adding other things from over here. Like for instance, I use the squeeze, which is the trigger. So I can go ahead and add that too. So then as you can see, if I use the trigger, you get a analog signal from the trigger. And then you can go ahead and merge these two. And then you got all the things that you want and it's clean. Feel free to manage this however you want to. Uh, if it's going to be hard to remember each of these addresses, you can go ahead and select more things and rename more things and merge them back together. This is just the way that I, I've done it. And so you're going to want to remember this network port under the OSC out, because that network port is what we're going to put into Blender. And speaking of, let's start up Blender. So we have this add-on. It's called Add Routes. It's by JPFEP. Just make sure that it's enabled. And then you'll have these two tabs over here. We're not going to deal with MIDI. We're just dealing with OSC right now. Um, so if you listen to this 0000, it's going to listen to any address that it can find from that port. And if you remember, the, the port that we're outputting is 10,000 out of Touch Designer. So I'll put in 10,000 into this port. And then if you go down to this Routes tab, uh, you can click Add Route, but the easier way to do this, which I'm going to go ahead and set up a simple scene. First, I'm going to add an empty. And then I'm going to go in and grab the actual Steam VR controller object from Steam VR. It's under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Steam VR, Resources, Render Model, Vive Controller, VR Controller Vive. So now we have the actual controller, so it, it looks all nice. When we start tracking it, we'll be able to see exactly what its orientation is. And I find this helps a lot with uh, adding a puppet. You know how you're holding it because you can parent it to this controller. But you're going to want to drag the controller, hold down shift over the empty, and let go. And then that parents the controller to the empty, and then you're going to want to rotate this uh, negative 90 on the x-axis. That way, what this controller thinks is y positive and negative is now z positive and negative. So we're going to go into location, and I'm going to go ahead and quickly set the quaternion on the controller. But we're going to start with location. You can just right click any of the location values and hit create a real time route. And that's going to add a route directly in this tab. And you can change engine to OSC. And then hit receive and then type in the address for that specific property that you're wanting to change. In my case, I want the right controller, R, transform, and X.
Also, go back in here and make sure you check this listen. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this route. And then under that route, there's this index number. That's this index. So there's three different values for location. Uh, the, the first index is 0, and the second one is 1. So as you can see, now we're messing with the y axis. So then you want to change the address to right controller transform y, RTY. And then I'm going to copy this again. Change the index, change the address. Just to keep this organized, I'm going to add a category location and hit category here and show categories. And then I'm going to move all of these to location. Then I'm going to make a new category, call it rotation. And then I'm going to right click the rotation, make sure it's on quaternion. Right click any of these rotation values, and then it will add the rotation quaternion under the routes. Make sure this is set to OSC and change the address to RQW and hit receive. And then we can just do the same thing for XYZ. All right, so as you can see, we've set up the XYZ W for the rotation, and now it tracks perfectly all the way around. We have a uh, three dimensional tracking in real time and Blender with the Vive controller. If you wanted to add something like, I'm gonna go ahead and disable this. Like moving the trigger, when you move the trigger, I'm going to go ahead and reset the position and rotation of the controller. I can add a shape key. I'm going to call this trigger. And then I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to move the uh, 3D cursor to about there. I'm going to select any of these, press Control L, rotate. Whoops. First, use uh, 3D cursor as the rotate axis. And I'm just going to move it just to where it just touches the inside of that. I'm going to turn this off just so I don't forget. And then go out of edit mode. Turn listen back on. And then under the value for trigger, go ahead and create a real-time route. Go to routes. And at the bottom of all of these default routes, you'll see this new one that we just created for shape key, trigger. And the address for that is actually going to be our, our squeeze. And then just hit receive. And then as you can see, when you squeeze the trigger, it moves the, the trigger of the model. And so you can use that same principle when you're setting up uh, any kind of a rig, like a puppet or anything that you want to move. Anyways, I hope that helps. That's going to be it for this tutorial.